Hello my friends, John LaRuffy here with another Straight Up Solo. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the solo version of Gutenberg. Let's take a look at what this looks like to play from a solo perspective, and then you can make a decision if this is something you would like to do, or if it's something you'd like to pass on. Let's go ahead and take a look. And as usual, folks, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, as it helps me build my fan base. So let me show you what we've got here briefly, and then I'll play a full round. The game has six rounds. And basically, the way this game is working is the Automa is a, I'd say, like a um, a denier Automa, right? He takes things from you. He doesn't really block you. He just kind of takes things depending on the uh, way he's ordered here with his initiative. And that's really actually pretty good because that simulates exactly what's going to be happening if you're in a multiplayer game. This game seems like it's very much like a multiplayer solitaire uh, with people like denying one another actions and you keeping some of your stuff secret when you're doing it planning wise so it seems like a good um, fit you can also use it if you want to play um, three player for instance and uh, you have two people and I would say you even could if you really wanted to play against multiple automas if you wanted to uh, do the denial stuff and just um, set up a couple different boards and draw their actions and kind of treat it um, you know, like it's a second or third player against you. But either way, I've got it set up kind of in the normal mode that they've explained in the rule book. Now, one thing I find very unclear in the rule book is it says set up the Automa's uh, board like this, all right, like the picture. And one of these is sitting up top of here. It's not in that slot. I have no idea. I can't seem to find anywhere, you know, if that was on purpose or what that means. So I have just been sliding it down like that and maybe that's wrong i don't know but that's how i'm doing it the way the automotive system works is pretty simple you are going to plan your turn all right basically with these initiative things and then you're going to flip over his card and he's, it's going to change up his initiative track and then if he's got more initiative than you or he's uh the first player in ties then he will take the action first and if not, then you will take the action first. And basically, you're drawing these cards that say one, two, three, four, and you've compartmentalized, compartmentalized the board in sections of one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, how you want to do it, one, two, whatever the situation is. And actually, I don't have a one D four available uh, just sitting around, but I'm gonna use this D twelve and divide by um, three or six in the cases of you know this to just kind of figure out where I should go. So instead of having to shuffle these cards, which is kind of annoying, I and mean, that's the only annoying thing about these automas, just shuffling this little pack of cards, I'm just gonna roll it. If it says two on the first, I'm gonna take it from here because one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. cetera. Um, and then you also have these things. So let me just show you what's on the board here. The board has a large score track. You have these orders that you can pick up. This is the primary order, and these are refinements. I'll explain what that is in a second. You've got a place where you can buy different ink. Ink is used in the refinement. Then you have these upgrade cards, which will upgrade your proficiencies um, from level. If they start on zero, they go from one to six, and uh, kind of explain that in a second. You can buy a gear. If you buy a gear, you put it into your workshop, and that can help you um, take some special actions or bonuses or different things. And then down here, this is kind of like a goals section. They're called patron cards, I think. But basically what they mean is you can claim one of these things if you want, if you meet both requirements on the top and the bottom, uh, or you can just take one of these little bonuses here and uh, you can't even claim any of these until round three. Once you've passed round three, as you go further, if you didn't claim one in the back, you can claim up to that round and behind to get it. And at the end of the game, the way it's going to work is you're going to score points for um, if you reach the upper ends of your proficiency, points for all the orders that you already scored throughout the game, eight points per card that you have, and then for every $3 you have left over, one point. Um, there's lots of other small ways to score points in this game too when you're fulfilling orders like I just said, and also some things in the gears and that sort of thing. So that's the type of game it is. Let's go ahead and play around. I'm going to get deeper into it first, and then I will uh, come back and play around, and you'll kind of see how, how smoothly it goes. Okay, so we're on round four here, starting the second half of the game. And I just finished resetting the round with the small exception of putting out the random ink drawings here. So we're going to go through this whole round. 
Hopefully score an order here. Maybe we're going to have a couple of choices to make. Try to figure out what we need to do to be, make that work. So, um, beginning, we spin our gears. So the gears turn, and basically what that does is each new round, you're going to get different spots on the gear that you can activate, that you might be able to make work. And you can activate those at any time during the round. Um, so in this case, my gears allow me to take to basically trade in one yellow and get two of whatever ink I want. Um, if I use an A type for an order, which I will, I'll get two extra points. And if I use an ink refinement from, what do you want to call it? Uh, proficiency or something of that nature, I'll get some extra points. So there's a couple of ways I've got to score points here and some ink flexibility. So now I need to figure out my planning situation. As you can see here, I have, oh, and actually I'm gonna be going first in round four, and he, no, I give him one of these to put in his first lowest area. So um, I've gotta figure out how important it is for me to take the first actions on anything. Now I've got some type here, I've got a bunch of A, I, O, U, what have you, so I'm good with either order, so, but I'd rather take the big one because I can actually do it. So maybe that's kind of important. He's got two, I've got two. We might tie up. Um, it does matter that I need to get a, um, it would be helpful for me to be grabbing the ink. So I'm actually gonna put this uh, second one up in the ink. On these, I don't know how important it's gonna be one way or the other. That's a bunch of ink pots, which would be nice. So I've been kind of running uh, with that of proficiency and upgrade. Uh, but the other one would be okay too. So I guess it doesn't matter. I don't care about that one so much. I'm just going to leave that just one in here. And if you don't have one of these cubes assigned, you don't get to take the action at all. Uh, and I'm actually going to demonstrate that because I don't really care about taking a specific gear. My gears are actually in good shape. I don't even need to turn them. I think they're going to be just fine. Um, I've got one here. This is for an A and that. Yeah, so actually, I suppose the most important thing, to be honest for me, is going to be getting that order of my hopes here. And then here, we're in round four, so this is potentially available for me. Could be for him. Uh, I'm way behind. I'll never get this, so I don't even care. I'll get my choice of that. All right, so I finished my planning. Three, two, one, nothing in the gear, and then one on the bottom. We're gonna flip this over and see what he does to modify his stuff. So what this says here, as you can see, it kind of gives you stuff on the far left to take care of. So this says, move one from his ink to his gear, all right? And then move one from his orders to his gears. So he's gonna focus a lot on gears, and that's great because I don't care at all. But he is not gonna take the patron card, which is kind of a bummer, so I might get a little competition here. Actually, no, because I'm going first, I'll get the first choice. So, that being said, I choose first in the orders. I'm going to go for the Gusco. I'm taking this one. And then I get to choose a refinement. Uh, all things considered, the only one that I have a hope of pulling off... Uh, let's see. So, that'd be double ink pot. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go with this one here. All right. So, these are coupled together. They can't be separated. Um, and the way the orders work is you have to do all of this... And if you do some of these things in the bottom, um, i.e., so you have to have all of those types of wooden type, whatever you want to say. You know, it's like the, the printing press parts of it. And if you then have some of those extra things in the left or the right, you get those associated uh, rewards. And if you have both, you get the bottom one. So it's always nice to try to maximize that. All right. So I've done that. Um, it doesn't matter what he takes. You could roll the die, but since it's just me and him, or him and I, pardon me, uh, we just discard those because I took the first crack. Now, ink-wise, I also get the first pick. So I could take one of these inks for free or pay for some of them. And I said um, the best thing for me to do would be to probably do... I need a gray, so I could take, yeah, I'll do it this way. So I'm just gonna pay one, because I'm gonna get the, the, the free one and the one right there. And I'll pay the one, 
Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this gear to turn my yellow ink into the bag and get two colors of my choice. And I need the gray and the red. So it was a slightly cheaper way to get the gray and the red for my order there, my refinement. Okay, so I've got that. Uh, then he would choose and just wipe out the other one. He always chooses the the full amount of, well, it doesn't really matter. Like I could roll it, for instance, I'd roll it, it says 11. So I, you know, that's on this side. Um, and so he takes it away, but I chose first, so it doesn't matter. Now on the bonuses, he's actually gonna choose first. So one through six here, seven through 12 there. And we got an eight, dang. That is unfortunate. So he took my double ink pot one that I really needed. Um, so I'm going to get kind of hosed. I'm not going to be able to score those points. So by default, I'll take this one then. Whoops, put that in the wrong discard. So I'll take this one and I could do one of two things. I could get the A and the, um, you know, the, the leather, it looks like. The parchment, I don't know what the, that is. Um, or I could just take one bump here and it would still put me short. But I'm going to do that and I'll show you why. So I'm taking the bump. That moves this up here. It gives me the opportunity to take any color of my choice. And I'm going to choose a red in hopes to be able to get that, if at all possible, eventually. So I chose the red because those are worth eight points a piece. And it would be very nice to do that. Gear-wise, he rolls first. But again, it doesn't matter because he just denies me the gear. But I'm not taking a gear action anyway. So there's that. Now, it comes down to the uh, patron spot, the patronage. I break the tie because I'm going first. And while this one I can't do right now, the best thing for me to do would be to take this option right here. That would allow me to bump this up to a level five, which is the condition I need for that order. I could have also decided to forego those points and draw another order here to get things going because uh, that might have been the way to go, but I only have, in that case, two letters, so I'm just not going to do that. But I think one of the important strategic decisions of this game is trying to get extra orders in any way possible here or other spots. It's more important for me to be able to fulfill this completely because I've got bonuses. Um, but if you want to score some big points, you really got to try to get two orders off a turn, I think, if, as much as you can. Now, maybe that's obvious, uh, but that's what I feel like, um, if at all possible. Okay, so now we have gone through all of the execute plans. Now we fulfill the orders. So you can see here, I've got everything I need here. I've got both colors, and I'm a level five on the ink pot and a level one on the, uh, I don't know what that is, what looks like, uh, you know, tools, I guess that could be tools. So that means $7 and all these points. However, I also get extra points here for using an ink pot order and a uh, order with the letter A in it. So both of those get used. So that's four points right there. Plus this four is eight, plus this four is 12, plus that three is 15. So that's a big score for me. It's a big one. So up to 40 and the $7. And primarily what you're going to use money for in this game is buying these letters. So each letter costs um, $1 for each letter you are, or for, for the letters you already have plus one. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That means my next one would cost eight because it'd be my eighth uh, type set. But I'm not buying that right now because I don't really know what I want. All right, so these go back in the bag. These do not get spent. You keep those, which makes thematic sense. Then this goes over here and is discarded. Now my bonus is that if I fulfill two orders at once, I can ignore one typeset of one of those and still be able to do it, which is kind of cool. I've already used that a couple times during this game. Um, I never rolled for what he would do, <laughs> but that's okay. Again, it doesn't really matter so much. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So he would have event he would have gotten that, but it doesn't matter because he doesn't get anything for any of this stuff. He really does not score at all. This is not this is a beat your own score with conditions, um, and so basically that is a full round right there. So then you prepare for the next round. So you draw out all this new stuff and you're ready to go. And you can imagine what that's like. So I'll skip it and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, so that is the that's a that's a one round of this solo game, uh, Gutenberg, and uh, 
you can see what it's like. The AI is very easy to use. You're supposed to draw those cards, like I said, to determine you know where you're going, but I find rolling a dice is easier so you just don't have to shuffle the cards, it speeds things up. AI is really easy to execute, that's a plus. It blocks like it would in a multiplayer, that's a plus. It doesn't score any points, so the overhead is really, really low, but it is a beat your own score. It's a beat your own score with conditions, and basically a win is, I believe it's over 100. Yeah, so the win is over 100, um, and uh, 150 would be like the max win, so it goes up in increments of a 10. The first game I played where I was really learning, I got a 98, so yeah, I didn't quite get the win condition. We'll see what happens. Uh, I haven't finished the game. I was tutorialing here. We'll see what happens when I do finish it, if I can best it, but it is a beat your own score. As far as the gameplay, this is actually, I'd say, a medium to medium light game. Um, once you understand it, there's not a ton of interlocking mechanisms, uh, besides the gears, but, but the rest of it is very straightforward. It's a very straightforward Euro. Money can be tight because you can be spending it on the, um, the ink that you need or the, the different types of um, print types that you need, and, and so that can kind of starve you from cash there. Uh, but I would not say this game is particularly tough to, you know, balance or figure out uh, in your brain. It's pretty obvious what you're going to try to do. You're really trying to decide, am I going to maximize everything, take a big risk with some of the bigger orders to get a lot of stuff or to get little orders. But really, there's not a lot of orders that come up. So one of the things I think, which is, I mean, it's it, you want to be constrained for sure, but there is a lot of luck involved in which orders are drawn at the beginning. Yes, you can plan for it um, as you go, but it's if you draw the right orders and they just happen to fit with the letter stacks that you already have, then it's like, oh, that's an obvious and easy choice. And if they don't match up, then it's going to be a tougher game. So I think that's a negative in my mind that there is a there's more luck here than than you you might think in that regard. Now that's okay to have luck. All right, but this one is really determines the uh, your primary ability to you know have an easy time, easy go at the game. You know, you might have a lot of letters. I mean, and and I guess what, what you want to do to to deal with that is probably work on having you know investing your cash, getting the letters, being flexible so that whatever card comes up will work for you in your strategy. Um, I do like the refinements. I like how that is an opportunity to you know enhance and enhance, and then if you do both of them, you even get more to maximize the points or the bonuses, and I think that's good. And the rewards there don't always have to be points. Sometimes they can be extra ink, sometimes they can be orders, and that helps, um, you know, determine the worth of it. So I think that's cool. The, uh, the, the choosing of the ink is pretty, I don't know, kind of mundane. I mean, honestly, it's, you know, you, you choose left to, to right. It's a very simple market mechanism, so to speak. I don't think it's all that interesting. It's been done before. The bonuses, whether I take one or the other, um, or move up on my tracks in one way or the other, um, you know, two spaces or one by default is okay. Uh, I wouldn't say it's also that all that novel either. The gears are probably the most novel thing, um, and it just basically kind of helps you. Okay, do a little thinking about this is going to come out when this is going to happen, and, and um, you get a little strategy and some tactics around that. So I'll give them a plus on the gears. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, and then the patron cards are really just more order fulfillment, but just in a, in a more strategic way because they're bigger um, and they're worth eight points. Probably the most difficult thing about the game is to figure out what you want to do in your plan, and you only have a certain amount of cubes. So if you really need to take something, you have to you know spend a lot more of your initiative cubes to go to that spot versus... You know, and maybe even short yourself a, like taking something. Like I didn't take a gear, but the gear one, if you don't take a gear, um, it's not necessarily a punitive. Sometimes you you could take one to replace one that you didn't, you know, that you want to switch up your strategy. But sometimes you just pick one up and um, you know turn it and put it where you need it to be. And I've seen people saying that's kind of gamey, um, and I can see that. Uh, although it's circumstantial whether it's going to happen or not. Um, like everything else in this game. So what I would say is, I think this game's going to be in my collection for a little bit, but ultimately I see myself selling it um, because it just doesn't do enough new for me. And what it does do is, I'd say, kind of, there's a decent amount, there's maybe too much amount of luck as far as 
how the orders come out. Um, and, you know, I haven't played it a ton. There's the, the different bonuses that you get do help things stay fresh so that will change your strategy. Um, and that does, you know, enhance the game for sure. It's necessary. But ultimately, I feel like this is an amalgamation of a bunch of different mechanics that we've seen before. Kind of like set collection, order fulfillment, um, the gears, you know, a delayed reward that comes in there. And it's okay. It's a great gateway game for people who would not be have experience with Euros. I could definitely see this going for someone who um, is just getting into the hobby. And so it's a good game. It's just not, it doesn't fill a niche for me that is unique, that stands out of, uh, above from anything else in my collection, you know. And so ultimately, I think I'm enjoying it for a little bit, but it's going to fade and then I'm going to end up parting with it. That's my recommendation for you who are still getting into solo games. It's very easy to solo this one. And if you like to play solo and multiplayer and have some people who like light, uh, medium, or I'm sorry, medium light games, this is a good one. For people who enjoy heavier fare and things like that, I may want to pass on that. Um, there's not a ton here that would sate that app, you know, really get into your, um, your appetite for heaviness. So that's my recommendation. That's where I see uh, this game falling. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it. And whatever you play in the future or do game-wise, I hope you have a fantastic time doing it. Take it easy, everybody.